Let's explore in this video how a transistor can behave as a voltage amplifier. Now, we, even before we begin drawing the circuit for a transistor, let's first understand what does it mean mathematically for the output voltage or output signal to be amplified version of the input voltage or input signal. So, so let's take an example. Imagine we have our input voltage like this, which swings from zero to two units. It could be volts, millivolts, whatever. Let's not worry about the units. Say zero to two units quickly and then slowly dies out back to zero. Now suppose we want our output voltage to be, I don't know, maybe 10 times more magnified. What might, what could we expect? Well, we might expect our output voltage uh, to be something like this itself. The pattern should look exactly the same, but it would swing from zero to 20 now, 10 times more magnified, right? Zero to 20, and then go back to zero. So here's my question. What, what do you think is the mathematical relationship between the output voltage and the input voltage? Well, we might say, hmm, well, since this is 10 times more than this, we might write, well, V naught to be equal to, as an example, 10 times, 10 times VI. And so we could say, yeah, this is the necessary condition for output to be the amplified version of the input, right? Well, not necessarily. This is not the necessary condition. I'll tell you why. This is one example, one condition. But let me give you another example in which the output will be the magnified version of the input. So let's say the output doesn't swing from zero to 20. Instead, the output is something like this. Let's say I push this whole graph up by 10 units, by 10 units. This is still the amplified version of this, right? Because it still resembles that, and it's still you know bigger than that, 10 times bigger than that. But notice now, since I pushed the whole thing up by 10 units, this is 10, and this is now 30, because it was 20 before, I pushed it up, so this is not 30. Now this relationship is not satisfying. You see, V naught is not, is not 10 times VI. Right? It's not. But what is the relationship over here? Can you see what's the relationship? Notice over here, the change is magnified. See, the input changed by 2, the output changed by 20. 10 to 30 is 20. Similarly, the input decreased again by 2, the output also decreased by 20. So you know, notice what's really important, this need not be satisfied. But what is important is that the change in the output voltage, so let's write that down. The change in the output voltage has to be some number times the change in the input voltage. If we get this, then we could say that our circuit is behaving like an amplifier. All right, let's bring in our transistor circuit now. This is the same circuit that we've been using for quite a while. It's an NPN transistor. Notice that the emitter base is forward biased by grounding the emitter and connecting base to a positive 0.7 to turn on the transistor. And the collector base is reverse bias. The collector being n-type is connected to a positive, more positive than the base. And if you need more clarity on this, it would be a great idea to go back and watch previous videos where we've spoken about a lot in that, and then come back over here. The only change we might see over here is I've put the NPN, so that it will be more clear. And one more thing is this is usually called the VCE. Right, because this is the collector voltage with respect to the emitter, emitter is grounded. But since that, that's the point we're gonna take as the output voltage, we'll just call it as V0 in this video. Now we have to add one more element to this circuit because notice we don't have an input voltage, we only have an input current. That's what we've been doing so far. But in reality, to get this current, we might require, we need a voltage source, right? So we'll attach a voltage source over here, but not directly, through a resistor, just like how we did over here. So we'll attach a voltage source through a resistor so VI is the voltage that we want to amplify. Notice VI is a fluctuating voltage that I've given over here. And we would expect an exact copy of that, but an amplified version over here. So let's see if we get that in this circuit. So let's start with what we already know. We already know that when the transistor is in the active state, and we're gonna assume it's in the active state, we'll not worry how, but when it is in the active state, we, will, we already know that the output current IC, output current IC can be written as some number we call as beta, which is the current gain, times the input current IB. Beta is say 200, it means the output current is 200 times the input current. We've already seen that. But now let's convert this equation into changes in the current, because that's what we eventually want, changes in the voltage. How do we get to changes in the current? So this is what we'll do. We'll assume that at some time T1, the input current IB is IB1, and as a result, the corresponding output current is IC1. Then we'll wait for some time to pass, and let's say now at new time T2, IB2 is the new input current, and IC2 would be the corresponding output current. To calculate the change, we have to just subtract the two. So if we subtract, 
we get this. We just subtract the two. So this is the change in IC, and therefore we'll write this as delta IC. And similarly, if you take beta, is beta is a constant, beta doesn't change with time. So you can take beta common, and inside we'll get IB2 minus IB1. And so that can be written as delta IB. And this is how we can take any equation and convert it into changes. That's what we'll do for all the equations that's going to follow, all right? All right, so this is telling us that the output current is the amplified version of the input current, excellent. But how do we, how do we get the output and the input voltages into the picture? Well, what we can do is we can connect the output voltage to the output current, build one equation there, connect the input voltage to input current, build another equation there, and maybe, maybe just put them together using this relationship. Let's do that. Let's first build an equation connecting the output voltage and the output current. We can just use Ohm's law for this. If we call this resistor as, let's say, RC, because this is the resistor connected to the output wire, then Ohm's law tells us that the potential difference, here the potential difference would be this voltage, that is three, minus this voltage, that is V naught. So three minus V naught, that's the potential difference over here. That should be equal to IR, Ohm's law. So that should be equal to IC times RC. And why am I doing three minus V naught? Well, we always do higher voltage minus lower voltage. Since the current is flowing downwards, we can assume this is the higher voltage and this is the lower voltage. That's the whole idea. But I want, I want this equation in terms of changes in the voltage, right? So we'll do the same thing now, like what we did over here, but mentally, we'll do it mentally. We'll assume that at time t1, these values are one, and then time two, they are two, and then we'll subtract them. What will happen when you subtract? So let's take that change directly. So if you take change of this entire equation, then notice the three is not changing, right? This three doesn't change with time, it's a supply voltage. That's gonna remain fixed. So the change in that would be zero. When you subtract, that will give us zero. Minus the change in this, well that's going to be just delta V naught. That will be equal to, what will be the change in this number? Well notice RC is not changing. And therefore we can pull that RC out. Let's use the same color. So we pull the RC out and we can write delta IC. Just like how we did that, we pulled the beta out and we wrote delta IB, same thing. So that's going to be RC times delta IC. And let's get rid of the zero. We can also get rid of that minus sign. We can multiply the whole equation with minus sign and put that minus sign over here. I just want to keep this thing positive. And so there we have it. We have now connection between the output voltage change and the output current change. Let's call that as equation one. Now, next thing we'll do is connect VI and IB. And I want you to pause the video and just see if you can do this yourself. All right, let's do it. We're gonna do this exact same thing. We'll apply Ohm's law over here. Let's call this resistance as RB. And so the voltage difference over here is VI, it's the higher voltage because current is flowing down, minus 0.7. So voltage difference is VI minus, minus 0.7. That's equal to the uh, I times R, Ohm's law. It should be equal to I, that's the current, times R, R is RB here. And again, we have to take changes in this, so let's take the changes in that. Again, if you have not tried, please try now. Just pause the video and just see if you can do this yourself. When you take the two equations at two different times and subtract it, this will be delta VI. But this number is pretty much a constant. We've seen this before. Once you hit that 0.7 volt forward by us to the base emitter junction, then even for you know wide, wide range of the current, the voltage here pretty much remains a constant. And as a result, we can say when you're subtracting, these just cancel out. So we're just gonna say minus zero because that is not changing with time. That's equal to the change in this value. RB is not changing. So just like what we did before, we can just say it's RB times Delta IB, because IB is the one that's changing. Again, we can get rid of that zero. And there we have it. That's our equation number two. So what do we do with these two equations? Well, I want to relate these two, right? Well, we can just divide them. Let's do that. So let's make some room over here. We don't need the circuit anymore. We just have to divide the two equations. All right, so if we divide them, we'll get delta V naught divided by delta VI that equals, let's see what does that equal. There's a negative sign, so minus RC divided by RB, divided by RB times delta IC divided by delta IB. 
Oh, what's delta IC by delta IB? Oh, that's beta. That's beta. And there we have it. We found it. All we have to do now is multiply the whole equation with delta VI. That time this goes over here. And delta VI gets multiplied over here. And voila. Notice this now number over here is going to represent the amplification factor. So our output voltage is this many times amplified compared to the input voltage. And that number, we're gonna call that as AV, and that's usually called as the voltage gain. Voltage gain, just like how beta is the current gain that tells us how much the current is being amplified, this is telling us how much the voltage is being amplified. And so you can clearly see that our transistor behaves as a voltage amplifier. So that's pretty much it. We just have to understand what this minus sign is telling us. What is that minus sign telling us? What does it even mean? All right, well, the minus sign is just telling us that if delta VI is positive, this would be negative. And delta VI is negative, this is positive, which means if the input voltage increases by some factor, the output voltage will decrease by an amplified factor. So that's the whole, that's, that's what's happening. And why is that happening? Well, the only reason that's happening, again, this is something that we've seen before, is because notice when you increase this voltage, the more, more current flows here, and as a result, more current flows here because of this. But as more current flows here, notice there's a higher potential drop here, and as a result, there's a lower potential drop here. So if you bring back our graph, then we're pretty much getting a graph like this. Notice the changes in the output voltage is amplified version of changes in the input voltage. But the negative sign just means that this, this, this thing will be flipped. So when the input is increasing by some amount, the output is decreasing by an amplified amount. And in most cases where we use this, like for example speakers, that won't bother us because all we care about is how much the change is. It doesn't even matter whether it is increasing or decreasing. The change is all that matters to us. And as long as the change in the voltage is the amplified version of the change in input, this circuit behaves like a voltage amplifier. And so you notice that the amount by which it amplifies, the voltage gain, depends on beta and the resistances, the output resistance we can call this, and the input resistance.